Chipped ham and football. That's what Pittsburgh does. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the show here from the Post Gazette's Podcast Network. Brian Batka with you, as always, one of our Steelers beat writers, joined today by Will Graves of the Associated Press from right here in Pittsburgh. I'm sure you've read his stuff, not just on the Steelers, but on Pirates, Penguins, gymnastics, really everything. What's going on, Will? Nothing, man. Uh, you know, just sort of waiting already playing the game in my head. How am I going to phrase questions to Mike T that are going to get answers that people can use and, you know, abuse <laughs> actually and, and make actual sense. I mean, that's always the challenge, right? Yeah. We've got a Mike Tomlin Tuesday presser coming up in a couple hours after we likely post this show. Will will be there as he always is. And it's, it should be a doozy with all the George Pickens drama percolating the quarterback situation. We will get into all of that. First, though, this show, as always, sponsored by Pella. There's no better place to get new windows and doors installed in your home than Pella, who can help you save on your energy costs year-round. Schedule a free in-home consultation with your local Pella windows and doors to find that right product for your home and your budget. Give them a call at 866-593-1560 to discuss your project further. That's 866-593-1560. To get started planning your new windows and doors installation with Pella Windows and Doors of Pittsburgh. Will, you're a dad like me. Have you turned on the heat yet here in Pittsburgh? No, I, I, I'm sort of like uh, that, that commercial with uh, Kristen Bell and her husband where they're trying to sell their car. And she's like, hold. <laughs> like Shepard. That, yeah, well, sorry. Uh, that is, uh, you know, my, my wife that is where I'm at my Shepherd house. It is, yeah. it, is, it is currently a brisk 64 degrees in my house, and um, I will probably get my kids to hold off until it gets to 60, and then I kind of like, I, I will relent. But, you know, I like you want to go to college, there's 36 cents I'm going <laughs> to save by not turning the heat on a few days is a, is a step in that direction. I literally just flipped it on before I came upstairs to the uh, podcast office to talk to you. Like, normally... If it were just me bachelor padding it, I wouldn't care. I'd, I'd layer up sweatpants all right. the time for a while. I mean, that's basically what I'm doing right now. But as you know, I've got two little kids, four and two. So it's like kind of feel obligated to turn the air on too soon in the spring, turn the heat on too soon in the fall. Just just the cost of doing business. And, and there's just sort of a depression in that too, right? Because like it's the window when you can actually have sort of the windows open or not have any sort of air on or off in your house is like pretty small. It seems to get be getting smaller by the by the year. So like I kind of enjoy that. Like I like I like when nothing's running and it's just like oh it's 73 degrees in Pittsburgh today. Let's just open the windows and and have a good time. So that's that's just me. Um, but I also kind of like you know I also like a cold so. Yeah, people, our our viewers here in Pittsburgh know that, yeah, we've got a little bit of uh, fall weather finally setting in. So it was it was pretty chilly and brisk these last couple mornings. But I'm not naive. I know we also have viewers all over the country, probably all over the world in Steeler Nation. I also know this because some of the comments lately have been wondering, what is chipped ham in football? Why do I say that at the start? Why is the show called that? Um, Just just Google it. It's a Pittsburgh food delicacy and it's also a play on the wedding crashers crab cakes in football that's what maryland does quote so i I hadn't explained that intro in a while i'll do that for the folks who are uh you know uninitiated to uh to some of the the local uh fair here in pittsburgh all right well well we've got uh, i think it's going to be one of the more interesting mike tomlin press conferences in a while coming up i could ask you prediction for what you think he's going to say about his what's our go-to adjective these days mercurial george pickens enigmatic george pickens either way uh pouty would be a good word pouty would be the maybe the best word yeah yeah that's uh that's probably fair after what we saw from him sunday night against the cowboys just three catches for 26 yards pretty rough drop on third down at least by his standards mike tomlin likes to say make routine plays routinely normally for george routine plays are one hand catches two foot toe taps on the sideline that just make your jaw drop. But it seemed like the focus wasn't quite there against the Cowboys. There's plenty of people squawking on social media, posting clips of him, maybe going half speed on on his routes, not really carrying out his blocks. It's all a lot of deja vu to last year, also after the Colts game. But instead of a breakout game like he had after that one, he went even kind of uh, further in the tank against the Cowboys. Well, what do you make of this? And, I don't know, maybe the most glaring question or most obvious question is like, is he worth it? Is is he a talent? 
is he a player, a, a young guy, still 23, who's kind of worth the headaches, or does it get to a point where the juice is, is no longer worth the squeeze with him? Well, I mean, um, to your last point, I mean, they don't have anybody that's capable of making the kind of plays that he can make. And so until they get somebody that can do that, he, the juice is worth the squeeze. Like it, it has to be because they have no choice. Uh, but, you know, of all the couple of things, our good friend Jeff Hathorne at 93.7 The Fan pointed out to me in the middle of the third quarter on Sunday night, he goes, what is George doing? This was after the touchdown pass to Connor Hayward. Remember the Cowboys went on that long 90 yard drive. They had the ball for, I don't know, like eight minutes and probably 20 to 25 minutes of real time. Cause there was a quarter change and everything. And to me, George sat on the bench by himself and in the same position sort of slouched down like my 14, my 15 year old watching YouTube on the couch when he's zoning out after school, nobody, the only person that approached him was Cordero Patterson, no fields, no other wide receivers. The next, and so that that was that possession. He comes after that after the next possession, which is when he got overthrown by Fields. He throws his helmet so hard it bounces over the bench. And then Miles Killebrew was sitting down on the bench. George sits down. Killebrew immediately gets up and walks away. Okay, I mean there is obviously something going on here that's beyond the we're trying to manage his snap counts. But look, this is you, you don't think Killebrew just to talked to like Christian Coons and Corliss Waitman about punting or anything it was like well Waitman was on the next bench so maybe that's okay. uh maybe that's what what but I mean there was just it was very and I I, I was transfixed like I, I did not I would just wanted to see what he would what he would or would not do next I mean the thing is look we're gonna Mike T's gonna say whatever he's gonna say he will almost always protect his players I mean even right. a b okay and, and it's it says something I've been covering the team since 2011 right it says something to the PTSD from the A B era, that like anything that George does, and then Juju to a lesser extent, I found I find Juju to be like a you know a much more benign figure than than A B was. Big game, by the way, a, by the a way, guy the Steelers yeah. could certainly use. I mean, and I said this a couple you know a month ago when he got cut loose by the Pats, like they should maybe take a look at him. And obviously, you saw he had 130 yards last night against uh, against the Saints. So yeah, I didn't watch that game intently, is, but it seemed like a couple times he's just kind of running to open space. Right, Mahomes finds him. Uh, there, there's some scheme and quarterback related things there, but yes, he's he's producing. That's for sure. I mean, so the stuff that George is doing is like that. It's this is not even this this isn't even freshman team AB level stuff, right? I mean, but the thing about AB for all of the off the field stuff that you know. I had to write about, we all had to write about for years on end. Like when the whistle blew, he was the best player on the field most of the time. I mean, and that is with Pickens, it is just that it's not the case. So, but right now, like they have no choice. I mean, the offense is sluggish. Um, who knows what Mike's going to say about the quarterback situation? My guess is he's going to say, we're going to continue to ramp Russ up and then sort of see where they're at. Um, I believe Justin Fields offers you a better long-term, you know, I think Justin Fields can improve, right? I think the best of Justin Fields can be ahead of him. I'm not sure that's the case with Russ, I feel, because Russ is Russ. He hasn't, you know, he hasn't done much in the postseason lately. We've seen him in practice. He does not move like the guy that even five years ago, right? And behind this offensive line, if you got a statue back there or a guy that's sort of like, going to just buy a little time and look like Aaron Rodgers. I mean, even Rodgers doesn't get away from guys like he used to, right. By just in terms of buying time in the pocket. So uh, it's going to be, you know, it's just going to be one of those things. It's going to be 4d chess uh, with Mike T as it always is. And uh, we'll try to make sense of it, but my guess is Pickens will be playing and he'll be starting and whoever the quarterback is, if he doesn't get the ball, he's going to be pout. Yeah. I mean, I tend to agree with you that, uh, that, that Mike Tomlin will, He'll shrug this off. It doesn't really do him any good to further stoke the flames of any sort of brewing, roiling controversy within his team. But I, I, I do wonder behind the scenes how things are going. I mean, I, I look back at Deontay Johnson, and he was somebody who I think became kind of high maintenance by the end. And you know, the Steelers deal him this offseason, part, partly due to the contract, but I think partly it's just causing too many headaches. And, th and that becomes even less palatable for this franchise when they've given you that second deal you're extended you're supposed to be one of the grown-ups now and that I don't think that was the case and, and now George is heading down that sort of same high maintenance path I don't know if Mike Tomlin's ever 
said this publicly or if it's just kind of like the way that we all know he operates, but he, he tolerates you until he can replace you, right? And and that's part of just business in the NFL. The, the better you are, the, the more valuable you are to your team, the more leeway you're going to get with, with most coaches. Um, there aren't too many hard and fast authoritarians out there anymore, but uh, because at the end of the day, you need to win. You can't do that with all choir boys. But yeah, I mean, at, at this point, I sort of wonder where is George Pickens on the sliding scale of talent and production versus drama and distractions. If he comes out and has a big game in, in Las Vegas, which wouldn't surprise me, um, if he bounces back and responds and goes for eight for 120 and two touchdowns, I wouldn't be stunned. And, and then I think it will just be caught in that same cycle of asking, is this just something that you're going to have to deal with and manage with this guy for as long as he's under contract? And I, I guess that is sort of what the situation was with Antonio Brown by, by the end. It was like, hey, he's really good, and you've got to manage all the sideshow stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, but, you know, we're year, year three with Pickens, um, and it's time to start growing up a little bit. I mean, I didn't think Deontay, you know, Deontay had um, – issues but I didn't I don't know like I did not have the view of him that some of the fans did that he was like I didn't view him as a malcontent I mean I think he was a guy that you know just wanted to produce um didn't maybe channel his emotions the right way when it didn't go his way but it was much to me it was to a much lesser extent than with, with some other guys the thing is is this the nature of the receivers in the league these days or the, the Steelers just have this habit of drafting guys that turn out to be you know it would be nice to have like a DK Mech type here. If you have a wide receiver one who was not a head case, you know, and it, they seem to be absolutely incapable of, of drafting and developing them. I mean, I asked Mike T point blank. I think this might've been before week one. Like what gives you confidence that George has matured to the point where he can be a leader in that room? Cause he's like the guy with the most experience on the yeah. field in that room in this city. And he was like, Oh, we put in the work. I mean, George is really whatever. And so like, I, that if, if you wanted to say, how am I going to, go at this today. That's sort of where I, you know, that's where the question is. Mike, you said this guy's taking a step forward. It certainly looks like there, there's been some regression here and how do you, yeah, how do you, and now you're that? seeing it in the and, you know, and to what too. we were talking about before, he will probably, and th to me, that's the best way to get somebody's attention. Right. I mean, yeah. like as a coach, you know, that there is no better way to get a player's attention than to mess with his playing time. Now, if you're a coach, you want to see the player respond in the right fashion. Right. I mean, that's what you want. You want the kid to say, well, I'm going to, you know, do what I got to do to get on the field. And George does not seem to be that intent on doing that. And it's getting out there that, you know, I mean, you saw, you know, the guys from the Cowboys calling him weak, um, yeah. you know, and I'm sure that that is going to get under his skin, you know? So like it's, and that's opponents going, we can get in this guy's head. He's not a tough, he's not a competitor. Like when it's, when it gets south on him, he's going to be in trouble. He's, he's going to bail. And like, that is, you know, that is not a great look for a team where, you know, you've got some guys, some lunch pail guys that are all out every play for years on end. And like, you know, he George got some stuff for not talking after the game. He tweeted, he blew everybody off yesterday. It's in, I heard, you know, I saw some stuff on social media, like who cares, leave him alone. And I'm like, it's not about him. Like it's about the other 44 guys that were active that night, all of whom were available and spoke. And if they didn't speak on Sunday, then, because maybe you didn't have time because obviously it was so late. They're approachable on Mondays. Like it's not, it's what makes him the exception. He is not, he's an exceptional athlete, but he's not exceptional in terms of he's, he's not so good that he can get away with stuff that, that, that other guys can't. And I think that is one of the messages. If I'm a coach, if I'm Mike Tomlin, that's the message I'm trying to get through this guy. You are not special in the way that you think that you are. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. I mean, even somebody like Deshaun Elliott who gave up the two touchdown passes sits at his locker after the game takes accountability for it. That's that's kind of what a veteran leader uh, type of guy does. So um, also a quick note, we want to bring you this message from Goldberg, Persky, and White. If you were diagnosed with mesothelioma or lung cancer, call your local attorneys at Goldberg, Persky, and White. For over 40 years, their firms represented thousands of lung cancer and mesothelioma victims. Call 1-800-COMPLEX or visit gpwlaw.com for a free consultation. And, and yeah, well, I mean, that's, I think there's like two sort of, there's the stuff over here with George in the bucket of not running routes hard, not doing things without the ball that you're supposed to do, just generally not being a team guy, putting me over we. And then there's – because that actually does impact winning or lack thereof. Then there's the stuff over here with the, 
yeah, ducking the media, not being willing to answer questions. And, and, and I don't think this is people picking on George, George Pickens, because when you wear eye black that says always effing open, you're making yourself a story. When you're pulling down a guy like Jordan Lewis, you're making yourself a story by his face mask. After the game, I've seen some Steelers fans, some, I guess, died in the wool George Pickens supporters say, ah, oh, he was defending his teammate Calvin Austin who was getting into it. It with Lewis, or like, okay, if that's the case, then say that. I mean, explain that to people um, so that they're not just sort of speculating and, and the rest of the world can hear your side of things too. So I, those are like sort of separate, you know, same church, different pews a little bit, but it is just such a pattern of behavior and a trend with him at this point. I can't imagine that Mike Tomlin really loves having to answer for it so right. often. And, and last year after the Colts blocking thing for Jalen Warren, Tomlin came out and like, very unusual for him, as you know, did like a separate hit, a little spiel powwow about George and his, I guess, public facing demeanor. So, yeah, I mean, this is just like the story that that never ends. And, uh, yeah, we'll see if he calls it a pebble in his shoe uh, in a couple hours here down on the south side. You, you know, and the thing is, like, you know, just remember, like, George had the, the fumble against the Colts. And then, he, you know, he didn't talk. And then he, had, he talks during the week. I'm just thinking about Dallas. I mean, you know. Like that was an effort play. Like he broke, he broke one tackle, was in the process of breaking a second tackle when the ball came out. I don't view that as like, you know, Plaxico Burris making a big catch and dropping the ball because he thinks he's down, right? Like, I mean, that right. that was an effort mistake. Like nobody's nobody can really be a, a true somebody that actually understands football would not be like, oh my God, I can't believe that happened. What would happen? What a big mistake. Like, yeah, sorry, Will, you were breaking up for a second there, glitching, didn't want to uh, lose that point or, or train of thought, but I think basically what you were getting at was, yeah, I mean, he he has the fumble against the Colts, probably ball security could have been better, but I think there's something to be said for just standing up there, taking the accountability and saying, yeah, I, I was trying to make a play, but I also need to know, you know, when to sort of tuck the ball, when to make sure we, we don't, um, you know, give it away like that in, in a crucial situation, so um, maybe some people will say that's obvious. Maybe others won't. But um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm with you that it's sort of this player above team thing. And it's not just old media guys like us saying this, which I, I think George Pickens has sort of basically used that phrase before surface level media guys. Max Starks, former Steelers lineman, Super Bowl winner, and now he's on the team radio broadcast sideline reporter. He had some really strong words post game about how exactly what you said, George Pickens needs to grow up and, and needs to stop you know, the, the me before we attitude. And, you know, I give Max credit for saying that with the Steelers logo on his chest and being honest and candid. If Brian, it's something if Brian Clark would have said it on ESPN, it'd be making huge headlines right now. But uh, that's just a former player who now uh, works for the team and is around it uh, every week. Who's, who's basically saying that same thing. Yeah. I mean, and he's on the sideline, right? I mean, he's closer to, to George during the, these, these t- temper tantrums or, or whatever mental, you know, mental timeouts than, than we are. So Checkouts, he sees it, yeah. you know, at a, at a, at a deep, yeah. And at a, at a deeper level than we do. And I mean, like, you just don't see any evolution, you know, like, you know, you just don't see him sort of learning to accept sometimes it doesn't go your way. You got it. But the, the fact that he just doesn't, you don't see, you very rarely see him celebrate other teammates accomplishments on the field. Like you just don't see that. I mean, even AB and Juju, like they were, you know, the height at the height of the killer bees era. I mean, those guys were were there for each other, right? I mean, at least at least on the field demonstrably. And now, and you don't even see that. You know, you can say, well, he was sticking up for, you know, you know, he was sticking up for Calvin at the end of the game the other night. But like, I be, be based on the behavior that came before that, like it doesn't it doesn't come off like that because that does that's not what he does. Like he's not a guy that puts that puts himself that thinks about the name on the, the helmet, the logo on the helmet, as opposed to the name on the back of the Jersey. So, but look, I mean, Devonte Adams isn't here. He isn't going to be here. Okay. Uh, they're not going to, they're not going to be able to draft some, you know, they're not going to be able to get somebody in the next uh, 12 games. That's going to help them be that second playmaker. I mean, it just doesn't, I just don't see that happening. So they have to sort of just ride the wave and hope whoever the quarterback is gets in the ball enough so that he can be productive and a happy camper and we can all kind of move on with our lives. Yeah, I think Mike Tom today, will, if I had to bet on any phrase, it'll be something about how George wants to win and he's frustrated when he's not helping us win or he's not being a factor in winning. I think that's what he said last year as well about this whole uh, situation. So, yeah, that that is uh, that is sort of what you have to drill down to at the end of the day is are you somebody who's who still cares about winning, who's 
you know, okay with uh, with a lack of targets and, and production as long as the team on the the name on the front is producing, uh, even if it comes at the expense of the one on the back. So it should be an interesting afternoon. And and yes, I you know predictions on what he's going to say about Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. That's pretty far far afield at at this point. Um, you know, you take it with a grain of salt every week, I guess. And and then we hear from the quarterbacks themselves by the end of the week and. It gets muddled even more sometimes. So uh, anything else you want to add on this uh, or anything else, Will, before I let you go? And uh, you can take care of a couple more errands before you head to the UPMC Rooney Sports Complex. I, I mean, I think that Mike has done this this sort of game that he's played with uh, with the quarterbacks. I do think, and I wrote about this yesterday, I think it's been detrimental to Justin Fields' development. I, I really think, and I asked him this on Thursday, you know, Russ is getting healthy. Do you feel like you have more pressure now than maybe you did a couple weeks ago to kind of go out there and prove to Mike T or whoever that you're the guy? And he said no. But, I mean, if every week feels like a tryout at that position, especially when you're in a first year with your a new system, a new coordinator, you're kind of learning as you go, um, you know, I, I just think, and I understand, I can understand Mike T's, you know, situation this team has juggled quarterbacks for three years straight now right and really since 2014 they've had one or two years where the quarterback has had has been available to start every game because they were healthy you know all the other years yeah. Ben would miss a couple of games obviously 19 he missed most of it you know you have the rain you have the random year he gets COVID one year and then you have the random year where he's healthy week 17 and they let Mason start right but you basically need two quarterbacks so I understand him not wanting to dismiss Russ out of hand but I think you know having putting Justin in this position where he sort of has to walk on eggshells and can't can't make mistakes. I mean, how do you bench a guy? They're three and two. His quarterback rating is is what it is. He did not he's had one like legitimately not great game. And if they go to Russ, um, you know, against the Raiders, it's going to be like, well, what you know, what's the message to the to the rest of the team? So um, but that look, I could uh, like and I'll come back on here in four months if we're getting if we're in New Orleans on Bourbon Street and we're celebrating, you know, Russ riding these guys to whatever his trademark is get the seven or whatever it is, you know, like, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean like that I will eat it and happily, uh, happily. So, but I just think that, you know, Mike has sort of mishandled this thing. And and I don't, I think they're the, the team's going to be spinning its wheel most of the season because of it. Yeah. Yeah. I hear, hear what you're saying there. And I'm, I'm also somebody who I'm not ready to pull the hook out for Justin Fields either and usher him off the stage. Uh, but, you know, I, I guess I would argue that, you know, even if he were, let's say Mike Tomlin came out after week three and said, yeah, Justin's our guy. He's he's QB one now. We're going to let Russ, you know, take on the backup role. But it doesn't mean you can't be benched. So there, there might have still been some sort of pressure. But I see what you're saying about the peace of mind of knowing or hearing one thing or the other um, going beyond the depth chart. But I think also maybe Mike Tomlin would say if he were just drinking the truth serum and talking to us, shooting the, the stuff, he'd say, oh, I've been plenty complimentary of him. I, I said, I didn't feel any blink in him last week and that he's played well. So yeah, I mean, that's always the delicate uh, dance that you have to balance. And, you know, I, I think they, we all sort of knew what that dynamic was going to be with these two uh, when you got a couple of 2023 starters in the same room, even though one's a vet and, and one's a young guy, obviously. So younger people get mad when you say Justin Fields is a younger quarterback and he's, he's in his fourth year. So I don't want. I don't want to say he's a young guy, but you know he's he's a decade younger than Russell Wilson. So put it that way. But, all right. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Will. No, I was no. You, you get me on this thing. I'll, I'll talk for an hour. So this is your show. <laughs> Appreciate you having me on, and um, I can't wait for the fan to uh, cut up all the sound bites from the questions I ask, and then not give me credit for it. So. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what to say about that, or the you know any aggregation that that may come out of this, but. Uh, no, I think it was uh, it was a good discussion, and and obviously the George Pickens thing is uh, it's it's fascinating. At the end of the day, it's entertainment. It's it's reality TV for people. It, you know, I know there's the diehard fans who want the Steelers to win no matter what. At the end of the day, but this is uh you know the constant churn of of uh you know things that keep us going during the week, and his his development or lack thereof is going to be intriguing and, and fascinating to watch both on and off the field responding from this. So for Will Graves from the Associated Press, thanks a lot for joining us. I'm Brian Badco. Appreciate you finding Chip Tam and football. We'll do it again next week. We'll have plenty more stories, podcasts, videos, all that good stuff from the Steelers this week as they prepare for the Raiders out in Vegas. Talk to you next time. Thank you for checking out this content from Post Gazette Sports. If you watch this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. 
For all of the sports coverage the Post-Gazette has to offer, visit post-gazette.com. Post-Gazette.